<laughs> we'll start with broadcast and then we'll move on to, to written. Um, Jamie, if you want to kick us off with Sky. Cheers, Ian. Uh, good afternoon, David. Let's start with news about Danny Ings. He's completed the hat trick of Claret and Blue Premier League club mm. tonight. Um, proven Premier League goal scorer is probably exactly what you need, isn't it? Yeah, I think it, it is what we need. We need someone who knows the league. And look, we've been linked with a few players and we've had a look at a few players to try and bring into strengthen. But I wanted to bring somebody who wasn't a risk uh, as far as knowing the league, someone who knew how to score and has scored. So I think Danny Ings is as good as it gets. And to be fair, at this time in the year, it's not easy to pick up centre forward. So we're really pleased to have him. Uh, He's already settled in quite well this morning, so uh, we're really pleased to get him. And he was registered before the day was paid. Well, I don't know about his registration. I didn't actually check with, with Andrew on the way out. I just know that the paperwork was getting filed. Whether it's it's registered yet, I've actually forgot to ask the question, to be honest. Okay. Tomorrow has the feel of a, a huge game. When you've been in the business for as long as you have, do some games feel bigger than others? Does this feel because of where both sides are at the moment? Like uh, the it's, it's a huge game for us both, yeah. And... Uh, but one, one you look forward to, you know, you've got to, you know, you've I've had a lot of big games, and uh, tomorrow is a different, a big game in a different way tomorrow. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, and hopefully we can we can come out on top. You're coming off obviously two incredible seasons with this club: sixth place finish, seventh place finish, back to back mm -hmm. seasons with European football. But the fans can turn very quickly, can't they? We saw mm -hmm. Man City getting booed off at half time yesterday. Do you think this short term is in these short memories? It's becoming real. Well, you're right with what you say. Your your question's right. We, you know, they brought me in uh, West Ham twice before to to sort of rescue the club and get them get them up. Then we've had two seasons where we've we've finished sixth and seventh in in the Premier League and finished up in Europe. We've we've nearly been in all the the European cities in the last two years, which has been fantastic for West Ham and some which are probably, you know, some of you people t will be able to tell me better when the last time West Ham were in when that situation. Uh, I think the manager's job, any manager's job, is to raise expectations and get get your team going in the right direction. We've got much more media people here than ever before. It tells you about the the bigger interest in West Ham, not only here but in Europe and in worldwide as well. So. I think the last few years have been pretty good for West Ham and uh, at times it can not go as well as you'd like but, uh, but that's the facts. You talk about raising expectations, that, that can bite you as well Camden and are you seeing that a bit yeah. because you've raised expectations now because mm -hmm. of where you are. Yeah, but it's a good thing isn't it? Yeah. You know that, that we get 60,000 at a stadium, you know there's very few football clubs in, in the world can get 60,000 at a stadium. The supporters come in, yeah, and, and as you said, they can they moan. West Ham supporters can moan as as, as good as MD else. But uh, but let's be fair, as you rightly said, you heard it last night in a game at Man City, who have been been excellent. So I think that's the way football is a little bit at the moment. But I generally think that uh, over the last few years, we've had a great time here. I work with great people. Uh, I really enjoy the club, and I have to I have to say thanks for the support I've always had from from the board here. You've spoken about wanting to build a new West Ham. Mm -hmm. Have you ever at all, over the last few weeks, just worried, maybe I'm not going to get a chance to do that? No, I've not. No. What I do think is I've had to go off piste a little bit because obviously we, we brought in players and we wanted it to, to happen. We tried to... I used the word we tried to break it a little bit in the summer to to move it on to another level because I'd seen signs that we weren't quite going as the way I wanted to but uh, no we've had to go and maybe do things slightly different because of the position we're in at the moment So one final question for me um, I spoke about the podcast and you mentioned in it how close you were with Bill Kent right when you see like last weekend he amongst others were told to stay away from Goodison Park because their safety couldn't be guaranteed as a club, you obviously still very close to your heart. It must hurt you to see Everton in the state there. Yeah, I remember when I came here, I think I was only here three or four games. We had supporters running on the pitch. Uh, you know, it was a terrible time for, for us. And I think one of the, the biggest things that needs to happen at a football club is, club is it for it to come together. And that needs the supporters, it needs the players, it needs the, the directors all to be as one. And I think it's the one thing we, which happened here at West Ham. I, I don't think you see a divided club here at West Ham. And I've got to tell you, in my time I was at Everton, I never saw a divided club at Everton. But they are at the moment, and that must be difficult to 
Well, I can't really comment on it because I, I, I can only tell you that this football club here is at one and, and much more, much more together, I think, than it's ever been. Thank you. Sean? Hi, David. Hi there. I interviewed a side that ran a couple of days ago to preview this game, and he spoke about the place feeling the pressure, but he said that he hopes it would be a good pressure going mm -hmm. to the match tomorrow. What have you seen from the players in training this week? Have you seen them feeling that pressure or still smiling? I think a bit of both. I would, I'd like them to feel it because we need to. I think that it's no, it's good saying, hey, let's uh, keep the pressure off. But I think it's also important to understand what it means. And I do. I think the game tomorrow is a lot. It means a lot for, for West Ham Football Club. It means a lot for the players individually and as a team. So from that point of view, we have to focus and try and get the three points. And look, we're not, look, we're just halfway through the season in the Premier League. So there's a long way to go but we need to try and make sure that we make the second half much better. And in terms of say, he's ranking either number one or number two for a lot of the attacking stats at West Ham this season. What have you made of his goal this season? Uh, I think he's, he's probably been the best of our attacking players at this moment in time. But, you know, we've not had many, many who would, who would get great stats. This time last year, we were way ahead of where we were at the moment. So it's obvious the, the area of the field where we're short at the moment and it's been the attacking players uh, creating and making uh, more chances or scoring more chances has been obvious and that's why today you've seen we've, we've brought in Danny Ings who, who if, if you look at his record and what he's done in the, at most of these clubs, he's always been a, been a solid citizen and always someone who's scored, scored some goals. Heavy. Yeah, last week you said that psychologically it was massive to not be in the bottom three, and we obviously are now. What's the team morale like? Uh, well, team morale's fine. I mean, we we need to we need to work to play better. We need to score more goals. That's the obvious thing, which we've just mentioned. We brought Danny Ings in to try and help us there. Uh, we are we're working all the time to try and get those those better results. That's which counts. But I can only tell you the players are in in good fettle. We'll. We, I want them to feel the heat because we don't want to be in this position. Do you enjoy these sort of high pressure games? Uh, I don't, it depends, you know, high pressure could be, you know, Man City v Liverpool, you know, high pressure could be a, a bottom of the league game, high pressure could be in someday, you know, in a lower league game, I've had those as well, so could be trying to play, win a playoff to get into the Premier League, they're high pressure games, so Every, every game has got a high pressure level to it, uh, depending on where you are. And just lastly, Danny Ings, is that someone, is he you plan on him playing up front with Janik Iskamaka or Michael Antonio, or is he someone who's going to replace them potentially? Uh, well, it, it adds to what I need. You know, we've, we've only got it. And uh, as you probably know, Janik Iskamaka has got, a, got a, a bit of a knee injury, which is going to keep him out for a short time. So at the moment, I've only got uh, Mick and Danny really is out and out forwards. Jared Bone I can use there as well. So hopefully they settle in well and uh, you know, a competition. And what you want is you want the players who want competition because that challenges you more to get better. OK, we'll turn the cameras off then, please. And we'll move on.